A little poem to start. This is called A Snowdrop in the Ocean. In solemnity we bow our heads, in memoriam where the virus treads. For though dawning February brings more light, locked down senses have dulled the sight. White we are against still cold earth. We nurse the spring and new rebirth. Though fragile symbol we may be, we forever herald recovery. This is a little exercise um, to paint a little flower, a snowdrop, um, and uh, you're going to end up with something like this, although it may change when we get nearer to it. Um, but I thought a useful place to start would be to take you through the equipment that we need. So, Neatly arranged on this tray, you can see some masking fluid, some large and small brushes, a HB pencil and sharpener, make sure it's sharp, some sandpaper, some intense blocks and some fine liner pens. Okay, that's all you really need. You, if you haven't got the ink tents blocks, you could actually replace them with some brightly coloured, um, like children's poster paints, you know, like the solid blocks that you could just grind down with the sandpaper, because that's basically the gist of where we're going with this. Okay, to start with, Um, in our garden, we have got some snowdrops. There they are, taking a photograph of them. And our snowdrops are double snowdrops. So, if you look kind of between the two petals there, um, they've got their lovely droopy heads, haven't they? Um, but double snowdrops have got extra petals on the inside. So just with a standard um, kind of snowdrop, you will have six petals. You'll have three of these long ones, and then between each of those, three of these shorter ones that have got these little kind of green tips to them. Okay, first part of the process is to draw yourself some snowdrops. So I'm going to use my photograph. And I'm not going to draw it exactly as is there, but I'm just going to pick out some of the snowdrops that I rather like the shape of. And I'm going to press down really quite heavily on my pencil. Don't you do that. I'm only doing that so that you can see what I'm doing. Okay. There's the top of the, well, there's the top of the, the snowdrop itself. There's a petal. Slightly wonky, that one, at the bottom. There, like that. And then, as I say, there's that, that little smaller one in between. Then they have, I suppose this is the equivalent of the sepal at the top. It's a little bit of the, the bulky end of the stalk that holds the flower in place. And then, this is the remarkable thing about snowdrops and why their heads are so droopy. Because they're on such slender stalks. They're so fragile. The stalks that connect 
the snowdrop flower to the snowdrop stem. It's just such a fragile thing. So the weight of the flower is actually making the end of the stalk curve over. And if you look, you can see where it connects, there's kind of a little join. Just like that. Almost as if the pixies have welded the flowers onto the stalks. As pixies are wont to do. Here we go. So then it gets a little bit more sturdy as it heads down towards the ground. And because they are perfectly round, these stalks, you, they, they, there's a light, little upside down semicircle when they hit the ground. And here's the thing, um, where, above where you get that little joint where you've got the delicate stalk that goes to the snowdrop flower itself, there is this kind of, this leafy structure that goes off to one side and then has this rounded tip to it. Something like that. There we go. So they are so delicate. Snowdrops. So I'm going to draw a couple more to make a, a kind of a quick composition. There we go. So I've drawn a little clump of drooping snowdrops. So now what I'm going to do is use a small brush and apply some masking fluid. Uh, now, of course, don't forget, when you come to apply your masking fluid, you need, and I've got it just here, there, uh, some soapy water. So I'm just giving my brush a stir around in the soapy water before I apply the masking fluid and I'm applying the masking fluid up the top of the flower first. There we go, so. Needs to be a small brush. This, this is a size four brush. Um, so that you can go neatly down the stalks. But remember, when you're using masking fluid, Try to cover wherever you're going with it completely so that you don't have to retrace your steps because that never works. So I'm just very carefully covering up the snowdrops. Did you know that in the original version of Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, as told, no, that's the wrong word, as recorded by the Brothers Grimm, she wasn't called Snow White at all, she was called Snowdrop. And it was Snowdrop and the Seven Little Men. So, there's a little intriguement. I might insert a picture so you can see what I'm on about. This is Snowdrop and the Seven Little Men as painted by John D. Batten in the, I think, the 1890s. He was an illustrator of fairy tales. And then Snowdrops I've got so you've got the you've got the flowers on these little fragile stalks. And then the leaves are like I mean they come from little bulbs of course, but the, the leaves are quite separate from these stalks. And they just come out as these funny little blunted points. Rusting up out of the ground. There we go. Another story that's associated with snowdrops, well, that is about snowdrops, 
is the Hans Christian Andersen uh, story, The Snowdrop, um, which is kind of like all to do with how it's the, the first flower that comes out because it's been encouraged to come out um, by the sun, uh, but then the wind and the cold uh, kind of mock the snowdrop because they say, you poked your head out too early, mate. We'll, we'll batter and blow you. Yeah, but the little snowdrop is defiant. Eventually, and this is the bit that I like in that story, actually, eventually it gets picked by some children, does the snowdrop, and it gets put inside a book of poetry. So it kind of, it, it, can, it can read poetry ever afterwards. Which is just a nice notion. That when you press flowers, it, you should always keep them in books. So they've got something to read. There we go. So I have covered all of those delicate lines with masking fluid. And then of course I'm going to clean off my brush. Okay, okay. In a moment or two, you will see a slightly different image of snowdrops because I've now got to put this to one side to let it dry. Right, so this is one that I did earlier. Um, slightly more simplified, actually. Uh, and I put I a bit of a skittering of masking fluid at the bottom of the snowdrops because when I took my photograph, look, you can see there's snow at the bottom of the snowdrops. Yeah, so I thought I'll include a bit of snow, I thought. Okay, so this next bit will require you to use a big brush. Thus, actually, I've got two big brushes. One's more clean than the other, so I'll use the clean one, okay? And I'm going to dollop some water on top of the snowdrops. Um... And I, I can, yeah, I'm moving my brush in diagonal strokes, but trying to get an even dampness. I suppose the, in a moment or two, this watercolour paper is going to start buckling a little bit. So you're bound to get a few kind of puddles developing. But just try not to over soak the paper. There we go. So a dampness. A dampness. There we are. Now, this next bit, uh, you will need some kitchen roll there. Um, and you will need your sandpaper, which I'm going to tear a strip off. You naughty sandpaper. Okay. And as I say, I'm going to use intense blocks. But you could just use, um, you know, kind of uh, children's paint blocks, really. Uh, and what I'm going to do is dust the colour on. So I'm going to sand the colour on the sandpaper and get a fine dust that will go into that water. Okay, there's a little bit of a sunny yellow glow to start with. Now, you need to think about what's going where. Um, plainly, at the bottom of these snowdrops, that's where the soil is. So we'll have a bit of orange, because it might be sandy soil, but it isn't sandy soil in our garden. In our garden, it's quite heavy clay soil. So we'll put a bit of brown. No, that's dark green. Is that brown? That's it. I think that's grey. But that mixed with the orange should make 
a brown anyway. Yeah, I want it to be quite dark so that it looks like the stalks of the, the snowdrops are going straight into the ground. So you can see where I've got a little bit more water there, uh, the dust is starting to spread a little bit. Um, there's also there's a tan one here, so I'll have a bit of that in there as well. That'll make it more browny. Right, so going over where the masking fluid is as well, will it nearly? Um, and then as we move upwards, we'll have. I suppose the thing about snowdrops is because we're talking, you know, tail end of January and February, there's not a lot of green stuff about really. So I'm not going to overdo the green, and of course the snowdrop stalks will be green um, kind of later on. But we will have, because the sun might have broken through, uh, we will have a little bit of blue up at the top. Like that. You can see where it's puddling a little bit because the paper's puckering slightly, but well, not overly. Okay, that's a thorough dusting. Now, it does present a slight problem in that we've got to use our fingers, of course, to pull the masking fluid off. Uh, a little later uh, and if the powder is still on the masking fluid we're just going to end up rubbing that back into the paper so to try and avoid that if you damp a piece of kitchen roll there we go and tamp I think that's the right word Tamp the coloured dust into the paper so that it's no longer dust, it's actually, I suppose, dissolved into the water dust. There we go, you see, and you can make it a bit more soil like then. Now, uh, of course, you don't well, you want the darkness kind of down the bottom where the snowdrops are coming out of the soil. But further up, you don't want that darkness. So this is why you might need a couple of pieces of kitchen roll so that you can alternate between the two. And where you want brighter colours, like that yellow and green, I've got higher up. You can use a clean piece so that you don't get darker colours wandering into where you want lighter colours. Got a few orange spots there. There we go. But this is important, as I say, because if you leave the dust together, and also this is a good way of picking up any excess water that is lying in puddles. There we go. You might want, I better go over the top of it first. There's the blue beginning to show through. Yeah, so we'll mix a bit of that in. You might want to introduce a notion of direction into this uh, by, say, moving your bit of kitchen roll off. Like that. So they're, ooh, they're looking like explosive snowdrops now. Maybe I've overdone it slightly, so I'll brush it back. But yeah, see, that, that should be dramatic when we come to take the masking fluid off because you'll have that, sen you have that real sense that uh, they have poked their head up above the snow. There we go, that's quite dramatic now. Huh? Uh, I, I don't really want that effect though, at the top. So down at the bottom where the soil is, 
I'll keep that just in kind of little tap strokes. There we go. Now, of course, that. I've got a dark patch up there that I think I just want to lessen slightly. You see, because you've still got water on the paper, you can lift out the colour as required. There we go. Okay, now, this, this again will look different because this is one that was done even earlier than the one that I did earlier last time. So by the time we finish this, you'll be looking at pieces that I did like four o'clock in the morning. But this is important because the, the colour, the dusted colour now on the background is dry. But of course, it's dried on top of the masking fluid as well. And what we don't want to happen is when we come to pull off the masking fluid, we don't want to risk rubbing in any of that colour. So what I'm going to do is just damp the kitchen roll again and just where the snowdrop flowers are, there's one right over the top there, uh, I'm just going to lightly damp and wipe off any dust that's on them otherwise it'll get on my fingers and I'll be rubbing it into the paper yeah so there I'm just, I'm just lightly wiping it and then I'll get a dry piece of kitchen roll and dry it off and then might be wise leave it a moment or two to make sure it is thoroughly dry before we actually lift the dried masking fluid off. There you see I'm not picking up any colour at all now and that's what you want to see. If you can go over with a piece of kitchen roll like that over where the masking fluid is and you're not picking up any colour then you're pretty pretty much guaranteed that you're not going to rub colour in when you do come to lift it. Right, so I've dried it off with a bit of kitchen roll. So now comes the moment of truth where I'm going to try to pull off the masking fluid there. For start at the top Remember those ever so delicate stalks that hold the flowers in place. So I got a little bit of seepage in that one, um, but I'm not going to worry too much. So I'm working with my finger, I'm not rubbing too hard, I'm just kind of picking up the edge of the masking fluid and then working my way down so there's two flowers you can see what's going to happen in a minute in a minute i'm going to be covered in little bits of masking fluid rubber i've got a big snowdrop here though look at this one Look at that, they look quite spectacular, don't they? Just, it's the magical thing of the, the whiteness of the paper suddenly showing through. And I bet you're looking at this and you're thinking, he's got more snowdrops in that one. He only did three when he did his drawing. Yeah, well, as I say, we've worked back now through earlier and earlier examples here we are, and at the top of the the little the little leaves, these little vertical leaves. So I'm getting I'm going to have to move the board slightly. Getting right down to the bottom now. Had I not lifted off 
Um, there's, and you see, here's my speckly bits for a little bit of snow round the very base of the flowers. Oh, got another stalk there. There we are. So a little bit of speckled snow right at the bottom. And a great big blodge of rubber. There we go, got it all. So yeah, look at that. That's the ghost of a snowdrop. Right, so now we need um, well, when I first did this, when I was first working this out, I just used the um, the fine liners. We will be using the fine liners in a minute, um, but I didn't quite like the colour for the stalks. So I think what I'm going to do is just use some ordinary watercolour for the stalks. So they're quite. Where's my photograph? Here's my photograph. When you look at the when you look at the leaves of snowdrops, they're quite a, a, a darkish, bluey green. So that's that's what I'm gonna try and mix a kind of dark bluey green. Okay. So I've got me a little set of watercolours. There's. A little bit of dark green. Oh my! That's quite a bluey green, just on its own, actually. Might try a bit of that. I'm only going to apply this. No, that's too bright. That's too bright. So it does need a little bit of blue into it. I'll pick up a bit of blue and add that to the middle of there. So there's distinct bit of blue. Actually in that one there's a slightly deeper bluey green. That's more that's more like it. Might go with that one actually. Right, here we go. So just on the leaf, yeah that's an appropriate green for those vertical vertical little leaves. They have though got this kind of little lighter coloured tip to them. Always keep this kitchen roll handy. Uh, so you could just lift out, damp it, just lift out the tip so it gets a little bit lighter. Okay, so I'm going to carry on carefully painting these in. Okay, so I've done my stumpy little leaves at the bottom, so now I'm going to put a little bit of yellow in at the top of these stalks, a bit of kind of quite a zingy yellow. That. But it's only it's only this top half that has the yellow in um, where these leafy bits are. That's got the yellow in. Lower down the stalk, it gets darker again. Let's just have a look. Uh, yeah, you see, where you've got the delicate little stalks that go to the flower heads, they're in it yellow. So we'll put those in, in a bright yellow. Very carefully, but not right to the end. So not, not that little bit that connects right to the flower itself. It's just these ever so delicate stalks. There we go, ever so delicate stalks. And round like that. 
So they're yellow, yellowish. And then the bottom half of the stalks are slightly brighter green. They're not quite as dark. I've got a little bit of that dark green in there as well. Uh, but they're not quite as dark as those stumpy leaves at the bottom. So I'm just going to be very careful in how I put these in. So yes, yeah, slightly, slightly different green for those stalks. Like that. And just very carefully, oh I've missed a bit of yellow on that one. Uh, there, there's the little bit of the stalk that connects with the snowdrop itself. There we go. And there we go. Well, I'm going to leave a little bit of white showing through. Now you see in that one, you lose the stalk. So I'm going to put it back in with a little bit of the darker green. Perfectly justified, I think. So there's the stalk that connects to the snowdrop, but I'll leave just a little smidgen of a white highlight, and then the rest of the stalk for this particular snowdrop can continue down. I'm not overly worried about filling every little patch of white uh, because I don't think you'd necessarily see every little bit and a little bit of white here and there just it could just be a highlight anyway so what I have noticed with this one is I haven't got that leafy bit at the top, so I'm going to put that in momentarily. Here's the stalk for this one. I'm trying to use just the very edge of the brush, and they have got in the middle of those little yellow leafy bits at the top, you can see a central line. So I'm just going to put that in as well but you see this one I've forgotten that leafy bit behind so I'm gonna have to put it in now there it is that's your little leafy bit at the top okay uh, now, is that dry enough for me to work on the flowers? I think it is, because they are, of course, snowdrops. So they really don't need a lot of colour to describe. I mean, you, when you look at them in that photograph, the, um, the flowers themselves are a bit kind of yellowy. But we want ours to be, like, stunningly, stunningly blue. So I, I, the key is as little colour as possible. Um, so, by little colour, I mean this. These fine liner pens, I got them out of the pound shop and they are water soluble. So in other words, just a touch of them, just a touch of them, so just a few quick lines, like that, a little bit of blue, and then a little bit of blue, on the inside a little bit of blue just a few a few quick lines like that remember the middle that middle petal in the snowdrop flowers has got a little bit of green in it so i've just picked up a little bit of green as well all i've done there is put a few lines in place but because they're water soluble when i go over it with the paintbrush little paintbrush they completely dissolve and if you're careful 
if you kind of just work on the one side of a petal, those lines will disappear. And of course you could use your little piece of kitchen roll to pick off any excess water. But those lines will disappear completely. And if you keep those lines just on one side, the petals will look really rounded. See, I've got a little bit of a curve at the bottom of that one, so it makes it look rounded. So I'll do another one. Uh, here we go. So I've got my hands full of stuff now. So you really don't need a lot of it. So with this one, I've got four petals visible on this one. So tiny, tiny dots. Tiny, tiny dots. Tiny, tiny dots in there. And maybe just a few on that one as well. And then, so I was just a little tiny bit of colour. And over goes the water. And you see it just dissolves completely. So, you get these very subtle hints, hints of blue in this instance. Or you might have a little bit of green in the middle. Just so that it's not completely white. There you go. I think I'm just on the cusp of overdoing that one. So I'll dry my brush off and lift out so it goes even paler. Uh, shall we have on a lower one I picked up a violet one as well I think there are eight colours in these sets so I have a little bit of violet in these two that are lower down perhaps on the inside of that one up there as well and I'll put a tiny touch of green just on the inside of those and on the inside of that one. And fumbling with my pens, just a little smidge of blue in there. And then that one's going to be quite a showy one, so that can have a little bit more, a little bit more blue in there. Got pens everywhere. Get the brush at the ready and then just a delicate bit. Remember, don't put too much water on, so keep drying your brush out if need be. See, you need just really doesn't need a lot to make the shape of those petals stand out. There's that little hint of green on the petals in between. A little hint of green on the petals in between. There we go. But you see, it, it really makes the petals look truly three-dimensional. These, a little bit of purple, a little bit of blue, and you see the light would catch on the top of that one, so I'm not going to put any more. And here's a little bit down here on this one. Is this one a little bit more in shadow? It might be. So a little bit more violet in that one and on that side. But careful. See, to make it really look rounded, curved, because they are genuinely curved snowdrop petals so just a sweeping kind of curved stroke with the brush and I think as a finishing touch I'll put the top back on that one as a finishing touch now hang on that is the blue one 
I've got my little snowdrop, little snowflakes down here. So I'll put a little bit of blue, just little squiggly points, into those, those little white blobs. And then I'm going to end up putting the wrong lid on my pens. There we are. Uh, so where's my brush? There's my brush. So now a little bit of water onto those so that they're not all just pure white. So you do get a little bit of a sense of just a hint of shadow on those little snowflakes. on the ground. There we go. Is the whole of that on screen? Yes, it is there. Yeah. So there we go. I hope that was, it was quite straightforward really, wasn't it? And as ever with these things, there's the basic technique, but it's open to interpretation. You can make what you want with it. Okay? Good luck and hope to see you soon.